Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Fallon. It's great to be with, here with you again today. I'm the CEO, co-founder of GSD Get You Done Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio. This is my show, GSD Presents, Silicon Valley AI in Tech. I'm a serial entrepreneur. 17 companies have been involved in two unicorns. We're on the original management team of Click Software, a Haifa Israel-based company that we brought to Silicon Valley, sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion. Again, I was on the original team. And also Eva.ai, an AI HR tech company that I co-founded five and a half years ago with Dr. David Yang. Love artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Uh, love cybersecurity. And it's with that and also farming 4.0 and agriculture. Because as we know, by 2050, we're going to have to double the amount of food supply in order to feed the planet. We're going from $8 billion to 13.1 billion population on the planet by the end of this century, we got to figure out how to feed them. We got to do it right. We got to do it effective and we better get ready soon. And with that, I'd like to introduce Ohad Zuckerman from Kofia. How are you, Ohad? Great. Thank you very much, Gary. How are you doing? Uh, I'm great. It's great to have you on my show today. And um, so tell us a little bit, you know, I, I know you went to Kellogg. Uh, in Israel. So how was that for first your MBA? All, uh, yeah, first of all, it's a joint MBA between Kellogg and the uh, Tel Aviv uh, University, the Rekanati School of Business. So uh, this is a very unique program for uh, executives that are uh, coming from different uh, companies. The companies have to push them and to pay for it. Um, and it's part of their uh, preparation for becoming CEOs or high-level executives. Um, the good thing about Kellogg is that uh, it combines both Israeli and American um, uh, professors, as well as visiting other Kellogg uh, uh, branches in other places like India or, or Hong Kong. And uh, the best thing is that uh, we have people coming from many places also expats and also people from the Palestinian Authority. So everything is taught in English, even though we are in Israel. Um, the strength of the program, not only uh, are the studies and the very good uh, case studies that we uh, learn, but also the fact that uh, we can then use the amazing network of Kellogg globally. So we have access to alum alumni club and the uh, you know, this is something that uh, makes things very easy. If you look for somebody and you know that uh, this person is from Kellogg, the person will answer your mail in a second. That's a very, very strong and powerful uh, tool, and we can use it, and we do. Oh, that's fantastic. So, you know, so your undergraduate degree, if I recall, was in uh, vegetables and field crops and genetics. So, I mean, it seems like your entire career You've been been involved from you know uh, early on Elon Bio all the way to we are today from Breedex and uh, Univir, et cetera. So you've been involved in this this uh, you know this community for some time. Yeah, well, actually, egg and food is uh, my passion. I grew up uh, in a family that uh, uh, with a background in farming. My father. Uh, and my grandfather and my grand-grandfather were all farmers. My grand-grandfather came in 1882 to Israel. He was one of the founders of a small township called Gedera. And uh, my grandfather and my father were all farmers. And as a kid, I used to work uh, in the orchards and in the vineyards. Uh, in 1952, my father founded Zerayim Gedera, a seed company uh, that was breeding vegetable seeds and, uh, and, and uh, field crop seeds. As a kid, I was working in the farm every summer vacation. Um, then I went to biology class in school. Then I studied agriculture. And uh, it was just natural for me to go away uh, to the family business. And uh, the thing is that, uh, you know, as a kid, I was fascinated from, from learning how, how food is made. And, uh, you know, as a city boy, when you go out to the field, it really makes you feel great. And I fell in love with that. And since then, that's that's my focus. No, I know what you mean. I, you know, I grew up on the side of a mountain in Pennsylvania in a 500-person village. And, I mean, the way we would make money is to de-tassel corn, you know. And, and uh, I had to ride my bike 
over five miles to see my friends. So I know what it's like growing up in the uh, farming community. When we grew up, if it was black and white and it was big and had horns, it was surely a cow. It was a little bit smaller. It could be a goat. <laughs> I mean, we kept it simple, stupid. I had Amish on the right, Mennonites on the left. So very, and a good, uh, open, clean place to grow up. You know, when you grow up in a farming community, it's a whole different, you get up in the work, morning, you got to work hard, you go to bed late and you don't even think about it. You're so busy, you don't have time to think. So that's the good news. So you went down through that, you did Kellogg, you graduated from university with a specialization in agritech. Then you've gone down through, how did you come to where you are today? Oh, had the copia. I mean, you've gone down through in each one of those uh, companies you've been involved in. Um, yeah. I mean, how did you come to where you are today? What made you to say, oh, I'm going to go from uh, Breed X. And by the way, you're still at Breed X and you're still at Unifier, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, the story goes like that. Um, Zrangadera uh, was my school. Uh, I learned there everything I know about business, almost 20 years. Started as a tractor driver, ended as the CEO. Wow. Um, I, I sold it uh, twice, once to a private equity fund, Markstone, and then to Syngenta. And after nine months in Syngenta, I felt that uh, it's about time for me to go on. Now, my belief is that uh, a manager can grow up as a manager only if this person is doing something new that he didn't do or she didn't do before. So I said, okay, I was offered to run a company which was 10 times bigger than Zrain Bider, but I said, no, it's just more of the same. And then I said, maybe I'll go to the startup words. And then I founded Univerve together with a friend. The Univerve still exists today. It's a microalgae based company that uh, developed uh, an amazing uh, uh, face mask. And uh, my partner still manages it. Um, so uh, then, in 2014, actually, a friend from Kellogg that was studying a year below me um, came to me and said, listen, I'm going to open a fund uh, that will deal in ag and food. I come from the food business. You come from the ag business. Maybe you'll be my consultant. I said, okay, no problem. I started as a consultant. And then I became a partner, a managing partner. And again, I did something I didn't do before. I started with a company, a big company. Then... I moved to the startup world, and today it's a fun. And every time that you do something else, you grow up as a manager. You learn new things, you learn new terminologies, you learn new business models, and that's the way to develop. So I'm very happy with that. Um, one thing I didn't do yet is to take a company IPO, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, I'll tell you a secret. My password to Copias directory is my last job. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's fantastic. So I got a question for you. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you developed with BreedX, you developed the cherry tomatoes. It says with exceptional taste. What's the deal? How do you develop a cherry tomato? Because by the way, I love cherry tomatoes, but how do you, what's around that? What kind of, you know, plant genetics or how do you come up with a tomato that's better tasting than other tomatoes on the market? That's a good question. Uh, so the first thing, uh, I would say the first challenge is to use traditional methods, the, the usual way of breeding without any genetic modification. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you look for mutations in, in the wild, and then you try to isolate and identify the genes that encode uh, to certain traits, like taste, and I will explain in a minute. In a minute. And then you try to do back crosses and to bring these genes into the tomatoes that you have today, which tastes as a usual tomato. So we found the genes that uh, uh, change the sugar profile of the tomatoes and add more fructose and sucrose and glucose, and they also change the ratio between acids and, and, and sugars. And therefore you got the tomato, which is much, much tastier. And now we're working on the next stage um, to increase also the flavor. You know that there is a difference between taste and flavor. Taste is just taste, but flavor is taste plus aroma. And there are some terpenes that uh, give the tomato its, its uh, smell, but also it affects the taste, or actually the flavor. Mm -hmm. And so we are now working on adding these genes as well to the next generation of tomatoes. 
So we will have tomatoes with different sugar profile and with the smell that is so strongly affects the taste. Uh, the prototypes are already there. Um, I've been there like two weeks ago. We made a, a testing panel, organoleptic panel that I'm a member of, and uh, it looks fantastic. It so I, I, you're making me hungry just thinking about it. I think about slicing them in half and a little salt and pepper, and then you're all set. But, you know, aren't tomatoes, I remember reading about this thing like in the 1800s in the U.S. Actually, tomatoes were considered, considered a fruit. And... Uh, it, you know, you're talking about high fructose. That starts to sound like a fruit. That doesn't sound like it a is. Vegetable. Botanically, it is. Botanically, a tomato is a fruit. Cucumber is a fruit. Melon is a fruit. Qu squash is a fruit. Mm -hmm. you know, pepper is a fruit. They're all fruits, botanically. Interesting. And now you're going to put more sugar on them to make them taste better because people love sugar. <laughs> That's great. That's right. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so let's fast forward. Tell me what you're doing with Copia and, you know, where you're interested in investing, what kind of projects you have today, what do you see for the market in the future, and, you know, how important is it? Okay, so first of all, Copia is a, a fund that invests solely in Israel. This is our first fund, our second fund. That, uh, for which we're going to start uh, raising funds in a few months, is going to invest also outside of Israel. But Copia is this this fund invests only in Israel. Um, uh, first of all, we have a, a very uh, strong strategy. Um, our strategy and our vision is to increase and to improve sustainability across the supply chain of food, from the genetic to the plate, plants, animals, whatever. So with having sustainability uh, in our head, um, uh, we and in Israel in our head, you know, these are things that uh, come together. Um, Israel uh, needs to be self-sufficient because of security reasons, and therefore there is and there was a huge investment of the government in uh, public research in universities and research institutions to increase yields and to enable Israeli farmers to really excel and have high quality uh, uh, produce in uh, very high yields. Um, and not, uh, so in, in case of trouble, we won't have to rely on import. Um, so in Israel, we have a huge amount of uh, research institutions uh, that really focus and work on agriculture and food technologies. Um, when we founded Copia in 2014, this was the situation. More funds than companies. Okay, so uh, we uh, developed a different uh, strategy uh, based also on my uh, experience as Rain Gadera. Uh, we source technologies in Israeli research uh, institutions and universities. Every university and research institute, they have a graveyard of technologies that ended up in a nice article in a very reputable magazine, and that's it. Uh, but nobody really took it to the market globally. It's about 1% of the academic knowledge that is commercialized globally. And One, the reason is that, that's amazing. And yes, and the reason is that the academic guys and business guys don't speak the same language. Mm -hmm. They'll speak about genes and about, the, uh, about certain fungi, and the other ones speak about dollars and market share, and these two terminologies don't uh, work together. Um, and sometimes also there are conflicting interests. Sometimes the, public, the, the, the scientists want to publish an article in order to get promoted in, this, in his institute, but the businessman says, wait, 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 I want to register a patent, don't publish. So we have to know how to be a bridge between these two creatures, and we speak both languages, we understand the needs, wants, culture, and, and this is our work. So what we do, we look for uh, technologies that, uh, first of all, meet our uh, uh, sustainability criteria. Uh, they have to mitigate food security, food uh, uh, safety, climate change. We we uh, uh, set our uh, uh, we work with the the goals, the SDG goals of the UN. Actually, we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, seven uh, uh, goals that we have adopted as uh, the. Uh, first thing that a certain technology should be able to accommodate. 
like uh, issue with hungers and good health and, and the climate, life uh, on earth, life on, on the seawater, partnerships, lots of things. And the, the idea is that uh, if we see that technology meets our criteria, and then also that the researchers are good researchers, people you can work with, and they have a good track record, this is the first barrier, okay? After that, we have the usual uh, criteria of a fund, that the market should be big enough, that, uh, the, that it should be answer a, a real need and not an incremental uh, improvement, um, that uh, there will be IP there, that the business model would be something that the market can digest, all the regular things that the VC will look at. Okay, so um, we have a very wide range of, of the issues. And as an impact fund, we also uh, uh, trying to do social things. Uh, for example, it's already the second year that we have uh, uh, decided and actually executed a competition only for women entrepreneurs in agri-food uh, area. And uh, this uh, year, we're also trying to invest in, uh, in two of them. Uh, so we'll have more women entrepreneurs in, in, in our sphere. Um, and in our next fund, there are going to be three more women that will be involved. So basically, uh, that's something that we put attention to as well. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, eventually, uh, if you look at our uh, uh, portfolio, we've got 26 investments in eight different research institutions in Israel and two startups to complete our range of products mm -hmm. and offerings. Um, and both of them are dealing with issues of food and also involve, you'll be surprised, things that you like, like AI and machine learning. I'm not. Yeah, because precision agriculture is mm -hmm. one of the things going stronger and stronger and it comes into all the domains of, 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 of agriculture um, so um, you know a part of the uh, fact that we have 28 uh, investments we're still looking for investments we didn't invest everything that we uh, raised um, we have uh, six project leaders that help us to manage the portfolio they are uh, each one is represent is working on a different domain um, crop protection, food, uh, genetics, uh, aquaculture, animal husbandry, and things like that. And uh, this way, we are able not to lose pen of control uh, when we are working with many uh, projects where only two and a half guys work in the fund. So, um, if you look at the startups that we have, coming back to that, um, one of them is called PharmC, and the other one is called To Be. Uh, PharmC is a, a company that is dealing with the uh, animals starting with pigs um, there is a huge effort in the world to come up with the culture meat and we are also looking for technologies that will be relevant for that uh, sphere however we believe it will take a lot of time uh, until it is uh, widely commercial and affordable and until then you need to feed the world so uh, we found a technology that is really interesting. Um, uh, it ac actually catches two birds uh, together. Uh, it also uh, increases dramatically the welfare of the pigs mm -hmm. and also enables the farmers, the growers, to uh, increase dramatically their uh, income. Uh, it's a simple camera that uh, is placed above the pen mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's able to identify each pig differently. And uh, since you, we already made thousands, millions of photos uh, of pigs and also took the weight of them, there is a machine learning that correlates between the picture and the uh, actual uh, uh, weight. Uh, this way, the growers, the farmers don't have to go into the pens. And this way, they're, they, they save a huge amount of diseases because the pigs are very susceptible. Also, the don't get into stress because of the human pig interaction. So yeah. the welfare is dramatically improved. And in addition to that, you got 96% accuracy only by taking the photo, you know, the, the, the weight of the pig. And this is something that enables them to be very punctual uh, when they take the pigs out to the slaughterhouses. And uh, why does it increase their uh, uh, income? Because until today, they were working on a hunch. They have the veteran uh, farmers that go into the pen and say, this one and this one, this one you can take out. The other ones wait. 
and uh, according to their side, they decide. Hey, yeah, because they like have the uh, carnival back in the old days, where I guess your weight, I get your age. You know, come on in. Exactly. So, 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 so the, the other thing, go ahead. The farmers are really accurate. I got to tell you, they really do know. They're like going into a clothing store, and somebody says, "You have a size 44 jacket and a 32 pants." I mean, it's uncanny how good some of those farmers are. Really, right? It's true. However, however. Uh, they are being uh, punished by the slaughterhouses that pay them less money if they bring the pigs in a weight which is higher than what they, they decided, what they asked for, because the weight is translated to the ratio between meat and fat. Got it. And the thing Got is it. that uh, the farmers don't want to be uh, fined, so they usually send the pigs in a weight which is less than the actual weight they have to. And this is how they lose money. And how so far this technology, off, oh, how far off in general are they when they go to the slaughterhouse? What percentage of the weight are they off? Five percent? Yeah, something like that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot of money. Something like that. Yeah, it's a lot of money. So the company has a very good uh, technology. Um, they already have orders. Uh, sales are going to start in Q3, um, and uh, they have uh, actually fantastic uh, uh, pilots with the companies in Europe and in the, in the US. And uh, we believe it's gonna be a very, very strong uh, company in our portfolio. The other one is not less and maybe even more interesting because it solves a global problem. As you know, the bees are disappearing and there is a huge collapse of uh, uh, hives all over because of viruses that uh, attack them and cause deformation and, and loss of, of, of the hives. And these viruses are transmitted by a small mite, which is called the varroa mite, that comes into the hive together with the bees after they go for uh, food. And uh, when they enter into the hive, that's the end. And uh, today, what the, um, the, the beekeeping, beekeepers are doing, are they're putting stripes with some uh, uh, chemicals that, that supposed to kill the, the mites, it's not successful. Not only it leaves traces in the honey, but also the mites develop the resistance to this machine, to these uh, chemicals, because it, they are transformed by, by, by contact. And we invested in a company called Tubin Influential Technologies. It's a company that the second generation beekeeper, who is also a PhD from Weizmann Institute, uh, established. And he developed a device that really goes into the hive and then able to uh, uh, reduce by 98% the, the varroa infestation in two weeks by a, a controlled fumigation of the same chemical into the hive. Uh, you can decide when to do it remotely. And uh, uh, since it's fumigated, then uh, there is no resistance uh, from the mites and also there are no traces in the honey. We are able in the last two years to show that not only we are able to eliminate the, uh, the, the varroa very quickly, also the, uh, we save a lot of work, we save the collapse of uh, hives, and we double the amount of honey. Wow, that's so, fantastic. So this is really, and the company has a calculator they ask the beekeeper a few questions, put the answers, and they show him how much, how many dollars it's going to save per hive per year. That's a killer. The company has already orders. Again, Q3, they're going to uh, start selling. Uh, after we have proof of concept, uh, a commercial proof of concept in Israel, we plan to go to the US and to New Zealand. So these are the two stops that we have. We are looking into more startups. And we just formed some new companies together with some uh, uh, other uh, uh, institutions. Um, I can tell you uh, a little bit about uh, a few of them. One is very interesting. It's uh, three different technologies to determine or let's say to influence the uh, sex of uh, the chick. Uh, you know, 50% of the chicks are are going to be destroyed. If you look for brothers, then the females are destroyed. If you look for uh, uh, laying and uh, uh, chickens, then the males are destroyed. And these technologies, one of the three, maybe two, maybe three, 
will enable to change the sex in the egg and before the hatching. And this is something that is going to change dramatically. Again, welfare and money. Another one is a company that uh, we established together. This one was together with the, the university, the Ben Gurion University. The second one is a joint cooperation with uh, uh, the Hebrew University and the Technion from uh, Haifa. And this is a, a way to uh, a platform technology to uh, cure uh, and also to prevent viral diseases in plants, starting with the leaf curl virus in vines, in, in grapes, going to tomatoes and cukes. And this is a very fascinating technology. And the third one, which is also fascinating, coming from back to my world, mm. uh, it's a, a breeding of an edible melon, a personal size edible melon. You'll be able to take a melon, wash it, and eat it like an apple. The um, rind is going to be I'm, edible. Again, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> the seeds, the seeds are, are empty like a seedless watermelon, and it's a personal size. You just take it and eat it. It's uh, another invention uh, that uh, is answering three very important things in the consumption world, which is uh, convenience, personalization, and uniqueness, and also with the growers, there because these specific uh, genes that enable you to have a seedless uh, uh, melon also increase the yield per acreage uh, by 1.5. It's going to be 50% higher yield. So... Wow. This is, this is a really dramatic change in the melons. And what we're going to do uh, is also try to uh, transfer this with gene editing to other cucurbits like cucumbers, watermelons, and squash and pumpkins. So these are just the three new ones that we have. A part of that we have in our portfolio, many very interesting uh, uh, technologies, but uh, it's all on our website. So if somebody would be interested to look at it, it's easy, it's there. No, it's great. So we're coming up to the top of the hour. So clothing, closing thoughts and how do people get a hold of you? Easy. First of all, I think that uh, it's important that uh, people will know that we're looking for cooperation with companies, with entrepreneurs, with scientists. We are very open. It's easy to uh, approach us through the web, uh, through the website or directly, um, you know, it's uh, it's very easy, and uh, we are a, a small a website. Very agile team. Oh, what's the website address so they have that? So it's www.copia-agro.com. Got it. Very simple. Great. Yeah, and uh, you know the best thing is that uh, uh, we are open also to learn uh, new things. Uh, we don't think that uh, Israel uh, has everything here. Uh, we also want to build connections with the uh, scientists and companies uh, outside of Israel so that in our next fund, for which we're going to start raising funds very quickly, uh, we'll be able to also look at that. Uh, Israel is not the only place uh, that you've got very good people that uh, uh, try to promote agri-food. That's super. So, you know, I want to thank you very much, Ohad, for uh, coming on my show today. It's great having you here. To my audience, listen, we've got challenges in the world. As I said, the population of the planet is going to go from 8 billion to 13 billion. We're going to have to be much more efficient and use our resources wisely. Uh, companies that OHAD's invested in or partaken in are incredibly important to be able to for security and also to uh, make sure that we've got a uh, bright future. So hats off to you, OHAD. And uh, look forward, audience. I'll be back again next Tuesday with another edition of GSD Present Silicon Valley. Thank you. Just one more thing, Jerry. You know, for, uh, for us, following what you're doing with the GSD, it's just an amazing benchmark to see how you contribute from your experience to entrepreneurs. It's great. We're trying to follow your steps in the companies that we are uh, supporting um, but you really set the course uh, for for uh, experienced people to really contribute and help uh, young people and so thank you very much for having me on your show it was a great pleasure and i hope that uh, we'll be able to uh, you know talk again and show you more things that we do absolutely absolutely well we have a great team it's all about you know the germans have a phrase gestalt 
the sum of the parts equal the whole. So, you know, we're out there. Go get them, and let's make a dent in the universe and make this world a better place. Again, I'm your host, Gary Fowler. Tune in again next Tuesday for another edition of GSD Presents Silicon Valley AI and Tech. Take care, everybody. See you later. See you later, Ohad. Thank you. All the best.